Ah, Goblins, the best way to traumatize children since Watership Down. And while I talked about how a realistic Goblin Kingdom would look like, I only briefly mentioned the army itself that the Goblin Kingdom would likely have. So with that said, we will take a look into the inner workings of a realistic Goblin army. And this will be our topic for today, along with its most valuable unit, the Goblin Scout. While in the next part, we will take a look at the actual army itself. And the first thing that we need to account for is what its doctrine would be. Now, since the Goblin Kingdom would have a very high rate of reproduction among its citizens and therefore a great population pressure, chances are that the army will be used to conquer new territories, which then can be populated by the excess Goblin population. So it will be outward focused and used for conquest of new territories and the subjugation of the people already living there instead of defense or something like this. Additionally, the high birth rate and young population the Goblin Kingdom has would also mean that life is very cheap. And the sheer weight of numbers is easily their biggest asset, along with the ability to sustain losses until the constant attrition brings the foe finally down. For while the Goblin Army could be completely replenished every 5 or 10 years or so, given the Goblin's high birth rate and their shorter lifespan, and tendency to end up as prey, and therefore high number of kids and quick cycle of generations, else would probably lose within a few decades if they had to defend themselves again and again against this green tide. Additionally, due to the high mortality rate and the great number of kids, conquering a piece of land for one's family or clan would be likely seen as the duty of their sons even if this means their death. So, the Goblin Army would be very willing to sustain these losses, simply because the sacrifice of one or two sons could secure the life of hundreds of family members. And with that said, we will get to what troops would serve in a Goblin Army, and what weapons they would wield, as well as how they would approach their conquest. And before we get to the scout, I want to clear up some general things. For this video, we will assume that the goblins have human-like intelligence, because if this is not the case, if they are more or less instinct-driven when they fight as a horde, they would be little to no challenge for any major civilization, as they could be countered with the same strategies and tactics over and over again that every nation next to a Goblin Kingdom would have to develop very, very soon. So for the sake of making the Goblin Army more than just a nuisance, let's assume that they have human-like intelligence. And the first, and likely one of the most, if not the single most important unit in the Goblin Army, would be the Scout. The Scout Force would be extensive to say the absolute least, as information would be one of the biggest weapons the small, weak but numerous goblins could obtain, so likely months. If not years prior to the actual attack, scouts would seep into the enemy's realm. They would even be a separate branch of the military and have their own command and control structure, and based on their reports and findings, the future armies that are supposed to conquer the realm that the Goblin Scouts are currently scouting, will be trained and equipped to counter this specific foe. And with that said, we will get to the equipment of the Goblin Scout. And very befitting for a Scout Force, the actual equipment of a Goblin Scout will likely be very light. Maneuverability would be above all else. So he would be equipped with just a knife for foraging and perhaps weapon maintenance, if he has a wooden spear as his other primary weapon, and if available, any binoculars or any other way to see far, far in the distance. As well as perhaps light armor, light clothing, and very light weapons, if at all. So no full plate armor or something like this. In terms of ranged weapons, 
rather than bow and arrow that need a means of resupply of getting arrows to the goblin many many miles deep in enemy territory. And again this is something that could be potentially stolen anyway, a sling would be given to the scout, since ammunition for that could be found literally anywhere. And since it is way easier to store and travel with it than let's say a bow or crossbow. And aside from all of this, I also don't think these scouts would have a companion animal, like a wolf for example, since they would require not only food in the sense of hay, grass or other plants, but actual meat, which is very very hard to come by in a goblin kingdom, but would also be a very bad idea to obtain in the target nation, simply because slaughtering a lamb or a goat would draw the attention of perhaps an entire village, which is the last thing a goblin scout wants to do. And I also believe that these goblin scouts would either travel alone, if stealth is of the utmost priority or in small groups, when they need to defend themselves from humanoid foes or animalistic predators. And again the goblin scouts would also trust their instincts as goblins. Goblins that are preyed upon by numerous beasts and perhaps even some humanoid creatures to a very great degree to avoid any potential dangers on their way deep into the enemy nation. And especially single scouts would also likely travel not so much through the lonely mountains or dangerous forests, but rather they would try to sneak into crates, barrels or anything else where they could hide relatively easily. They essentially would act like a perpetual Trojan horse and if they were discovered they would not fight or perhaps try to blind the enemy, but they would simply, without stealing anything or doing anything, run for cover. And since goblins are relatively small, they can likely escape from a surprised human brewer, miller or some tavern guests if they have a forest or mountainous terrain nearby or are in a very large city. But they would likely be not as fast as humans, so if they are chased down on an open field, then the humans would be able to catch, perhaps interrogate, but surely kill the scout and thus prevent everything he has learned from reaching his homeland. And you might think to yourself, wouldn't the attrition rate be terribly high if all of this is done as you have said? And the answer is of course yes, but once again the goblins can afford this, especially since the goblin himself doesn't need to survive, but only to pass on information to perhaps a nearby small goblin camp, from which multiple messengers are then sent to the homeland. That way multiple goblins would try to deliver the same piece of intel, which will greatly heighten the chance that it would actually reach the main force. As for what goblins do when they are successful in their infiltration attempts, they will simply study the city guards, the knights and any other military troop, along with any battlements, any walls, any towers, any gates, anything they can observe and that is of military value. And also what they don't see will be just as valuable as what they actually can observe. No Pegasus knights, no griffins, no wyverns or dragons, great, that alone is worth knowing. No standing army aside from maybe a few hundred household guards of the noble families. That's also quite important, perhaps the city or even cities will have a tradition of marksmanship, perhaps they shoot down particularly big birds in the mountains or seaside and therefore very able archers. Well, this would pose a great threat to the goblin force, since the citizens that will be drafted into the army will already be very very familiar with small and maneuverable targets. That's very good to know. And of course any form of magic 
will stoke the goblin's interest. And if the goblin scout can use magic, he wouldn't be able to cast fireball or something fancy like that, but rather spells of deception, of cloaking, of maybe masking his smell, or transforming into a mice, you know, stuff like that. And of course, even without magic, a goblin will try to camouflage its smell, its very being, will be likely clad head to toe in a ghillie suit or something akin to this. Maybe he will also pretend, or maybe two or three goblin scouts will actually pretend to be a human, you know? With a large trench coat and everything. <laughs> Just kidding. And a goblin will likely also try to simply focus the attention of potential enemies on other beings. Why not drop some wolf hair and leave some paw prints when he leaves? or when he's about to infiltrate something important, so that anyone noticing that, that something is actually there, out in the darkness of night, will look for the wrong danger. Another most important task for the scouts would be to familiarize himself with the wildlife of a certain area. Are there dangerous dragons or wyvern nests that need to be avoided? Are there dark forests, dank and filled with beasts? Or can children collect herbs for the village without any sense of danger in them? Is the forest used as a source of lumber? As a way to perhaps feed animals by driving them through and having them eat any fruit unsuitable for humans? Are there elves in the area that can traverse the forest way, way better than the goblins and therefore can sound the alarm bells if a goblin army would try to pass through. Are there perhaps charcoal makers to be found within the forest itself? Are there any suitable places of setting up a camp? Are there caverns, rivers or other landmarks to follow? Stuff like that. And finally, the scouts will also report what kind of food can be forged or hunted by the army in this region. Are there a lot of mosses and ferns suitable to the goblin taste? Are there lots of small animals like rabbits or something like this that can be easily enough caught? Or is the landscape more of a wasteland desert? Because in this case, the goblin scout need to find oases, rivers or just river beds that could still hold some water underground and anything else that looks drinkable, even if it's just the town's tavern. Finally, once all of these reports are filtered back and studied by veteran scouts and military leaders, people that are very, very familiar with this kind of work, the army's actual leadership will be briefed and told where more scouts can be found, for the goblins already in enemy territory will stay in place and continue their work until the army arrives, by which point they will act as guides and advisors. And in general, the social and military status would be quite high that they will have, since their task is not only immensely important but even more dangerous than being a normal goblin soldier, since you would lack the strength in numbers that a goblin can normally count on. And with that said, I will end this video. And fun fact, it was meant to discuss the entire goblin army in one single piece. But yet I got stuck with just a single unit. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to let me know your thoughts and ideas about the video down in the comment section. And as always, have a nice day.